my name is Esmeralda and I will be doing my topic on home. <coughs> what is a home? On the piece of paper that you guys just pulled out, could you guys draw what a home looks like for you? Can you also write down a few, just a couple little words that um, what else you believe a home is? Can I have someone share out just what they wrote down? I believe home is shelter, like from the outside world. Someone else, another volunteer can do that. Unity. So, I asked a uh, child protective service social worker, Koi Ruska, and foster care social worker, Nikita Ekakati, what they believe a home should consist of, and um, something that they had in common, and their answer was serenity, security, and bliss. These are all factors that um, they consider when looking for a home. Can your spouse be your home? Metaphorically, yes, uh, because of the way you feel when you're with them. Uh, you would go anywhere as long as they're with you and it would be your home. I personally am not married so I would have known. So I asked uh, Chloe Ruska if this was how she felt and she told me uh, most definitely yes, that uh, when she's with her husband she feels protected and she's happy and she feels uh, secure. So. Can you have multiple homes? <coughs> yes, you can, but there's always going to be that one place where you have just a stronger emotional connection with. And for example, Chloe Ruska, when she spent her time at UC Santa Cruz, she would always be in a cafe studying or uh, reading, drinking coffee. Like she would always be there, but she would not call it her home because of the fact that. It's missing the factor of security. And for example, for me, I love the beach. I would go there any day. It's my favorite place to be. Would I call it my home? No, because I would not feel safe just sleeping on the sand there. Does your home define you? Your home can define you if you want it to. Uh, for example, the way you decorate it. So, Chloe Ruska. She made sure that when she got, when she bought her home, she wanted her guests to, when they walked in, to automatically think, oh, this is totally Chloe. The way she just decorated it, it just describes her personality, but it doesn't describe her husband's personality one bit. And for example, there's some people who work all day and they just don't have the time to decorate their home, uh, but what it does describe is that they're hard workers. So it can definitely um, define you if you want it to. Culture. Uh, can culture affect your idea of what a home should be? So um, I did research on an Indian married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Patel. They were in search of a home. And out of all the houses that they went to, they paid specific attention to how the doors were facing. Uh, the front door had to face east and the back door had to face west because it's just it's in their culture It's just something that they believe in and the house that they ended up picking for it to be their home was the home that had the doors facing that certain Religion can religion have an impact on your ideal of a home? I'm going to use the Muslim religion as an example so in the Muslim religion the first door, the first room that you walk into, it has to look like a living room. It has to be big and spacious. 
and every other room in the house just has to, they just like the room, the space. <coughs> and their bed has to be facing a certain way, so it has to be facing towards Mecca. And that's just something that they take into consideration. There are plenty more factors um, that specifically just this religion for now that they consider when looking for a home. But those were just some. Can a dysfunctional home affect you? Yes, it can. It can cause PTSD. PTSD is caused by um, experiencing a traumatic event, but not just experiencing it, just witnessing it also. It can cause PTSD, not many people know that. So if you're at home, even though you're not the one who's like being screamed at or all the commotion that uh, is not faced towards you, it can still most definitely affect you. It can cause anxiety because it's just too much for you to handle. Everything that's happening, it's too much. It can cause depression. And because of um, depression, you start pushing away people from your life and you neglect help, like you'll push away adults, you'll become less social, you won't hang out with friends, you'll just um, start thinking like, oh, why is this happening at my house? Or, um, is there something I can do to fix it? And it just causes depression. It can also cause nightmares. You start, um, not only what happens during the day, it'll affect you, but it'll like sink into your mind and start giving you nightmares also at night. It can cause bad grades. Your grades will start to uh, dwindle once you like start ignoring everything else and your only focus is just like, oh man, I have to go home after school. I don't want to go there though. Can I go to a friend's house? And then um, it all just affects you. It can also cause um, substance abuse, criminal activity, outbursts in public, and brain growth, and suicidal ideation. So when you're having problems, um, at home, or even just like with the neighbors screaming or something, uh, it makes you more su su susceptible to to drugs and to influence to doing uh, criminal activity. Cause you just go with the wrong crowd. Cause you think like, oh, these people get me. They're going through the same thing or something like that. So you start um, going through the wrong path. And for example, back to this slide, I'm just going to use a foster care child. Uh, so a foster care child goes through many homes. And every single home they go through, they are always um, taking into consideration of what they believe a home should be. Um, it gives them ideas and like they develop new perspectives. Their perspective might be completely different to what we might think because of the way they've been growing up. But uh, factors that are always consistent are security, serenity, and bliss. You would always want that in a home. You want to feel secure. You want to feel happy. And you want to um, just know that you're at home. So the Tortilla Curtain by T.C. Boyle. Um, Candido and America are an immigrant couple that came down from Mexico to America to have a better and fresh start and Delaney and Kyra are a married white couple and what America and Candido have right now they're sleeping in the outdoors they don't even have a roof over their heads uh, they're constantly just trying to find something to eat to work versus Delaney and Kyra who are living in a beautiful neighborhood, but what they're considering to do is put gates up to keep the immigrants out. And um, that just shows like, oh, they're worried about this to keep their home safe right now. Meanwhile, the American Candido, they just want something solid and substantial, a place they could call home, instead of just living like outdoors, because that's what um, Candido promised America when they left Mexico was that she was going to have her 
home where she can have her chickens in the backyard and they can um, create a family there. And America at this point, she's pregnant too. So um, a home is just a big factor that they want. Any other sisters? 